Um, I will call this meeting to order at uh, the Waitlist Select Board at 3.03 p.m. on June 8th. Um, we will follow the agenda. What's that? Pacific time. Right? Oh, that's right. God. <laughs> yeah, this is killing me. That's 6.03. Yeah. Uh, in the evening. Yeah, okay. Um, I guess I guess the time zones are screwing me up. Um, so anyway. Meeting minutes. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve? Move to approve from May 25th. Minutes. Second. All those in favor, Fred. Yeah. Joyce? Aye. Me, yes. Okay, unanimous. Um, vendor and payroll warrants, warrants. I reviewed what Brian sent me um, and I authorized my signature. Does anybody have a beef with what I did? No. Yeah, I have no okay. comments for that. Okay, great. Um, public comment. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to discuss anything that is not on the agenda for today's meeting? Um, it, is this, this might come up under town administrator updates, but I guess I think I'd like to uh, see about uh, making a donation for Virginia Alice on behalf of I don't know, at least on behalf of the select board um, for her, uh, uh, she recently passed and she was right. a town clerk for so many years. I think that it deserves uh, some kind of a recognition, uh, but that yeah. can be, I don't know if that was planning to come up in town administrator upstate updates, um, but it's, since it's something we want to. Yeah, let's, talk. let's take it up at town. Good thought choice. Let's take it up at town administrator updates. Okay. Um, is, yeah, and and remind me to ask: has a has a has a destination been announced? Because I have not seen one, but I've been out of town, so I don't know. In terms of what gifts in lieu of flowers, gifts in lieu of flowers was I think to the Waitley Congregational Church. Okay, that's right, what they great. posted okay. in the uh, in the recorder today. Okay, great. Um, all right, Brian, do we have a uh, oh public hearing? Poll locations. We have a poll hearing. This is so exciting. This is um, especially for you, John. I, I know, I know. Joyce, I don't know what you're going to do without me not having, you know, to, to, to vent with me on the poll hearings. Well, there'll be, there'll um, be someone else to vent with. That's the exactly. great thing about democracy. Exactly. Everyone is replaceable. Um, so uh, we will open the poll hearing. Uh, it's a joint uh, poll location for Verizon Eversource. Uh, on the northeasterly side of River Road at a point approximately 225 feet northwest, because uh, I'm not convinced that northwest really is really a word, uh, from the center of center line of Straits Road. Um, Brian, what do we got? Um, hopefully there's someone from uh, Verizon here or Eversource here, um, but it's, as you described, it's a, it's a petition for a uh, identical poll location at the location you suggested, northeasterly side of River Road, approximately 225 feet northwesterly from the center line of Straits Road. Uh, my understanding is that it's um, a proposed poll that would replace a guy wire um, that is currently um, in the what's remaining of a tree trunk. Um, so I think that tree would, is, would likely be removed, I would think. Um, and a pole will be in its place and the guy wire, the guy wire currently runs across the street, would go to the pole instead of the tree. Um, that's what I understand it being. Uh, I'm not sure if there's representatives from either. Don, Don Voner, Don Voner, and I apologize, I don't know the name. Are, are you from Eversource or from um, Verizon? I am, can you hear me okay? Okay, yes, yes, I'm here from Verizon. Okay. Is there anybody here from Eversource? No. Um, well, that's unfortunate because Joyce, how many years ago was it that we asked that all the parties would attend these meetings so that 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 Verizon didn't point fingers at Eversource and Eversource didn't point fingers at Verizon and they all didn't point fingers at Comcast? Um, mm. Okay, so oh, yeah. Don, that's what do we on. got? Yeah, yeah, what do we got? But it's um, the public yeah, I think we do have some public comment to maybe be read into the record. 
Yeah, let's let's hear from let, let's hear some from Don first, and then we'll do then we'll do the public comments because I've got uh, a, a comment as well on on this. Um, <coughs> okay, Don, do you have anything to add other than what was read by me and Brian? I I can just summarize by saying it's simply um, to get the guy wire off the tree and to uh, put up a stub pole, which is not going to have any wires on it beyond the uh, tension wire to keep that other pole in line and intact. So that's uh, a quick summary. But, but it is adding an additional telephone pole to the geographic footprint. It Perfect. is, to the, yes, to the opposite side of the road from where they are right now. Yeah. Um, Brian, what's in front of that would be, would be pole? Or what's behind the would be pole, I should say? Uh, there's a there's a house located at one I believe it's one way river road or maybe it's hundred but I believe it's one way. Is it is it dissecting the house? Is it to the left to the right? <laughs> um, the current tree when I when I drove down the the, the, the tree that was was delimbed and it's only a trunk is if I'm facing the house it it was to the right. Is that correct? Yeah, it's near the edge of the property line. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is correct. All right. Thank you for that clarity. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I missed your name when you came in, uh, public comment on, on the proposal. I, I'm, I'm Marin Brady. I live at 108 River Road. And would you like to make comment? Well, yes. Yeah, so I think that I, I, my primary concern is the last time this was discussed a handful of years ago, um, there was a, a question of whether the uh, pole would create an easement on my property deed, and I would prefer to not have an easement if that's at all possible. Uh, but I think it all depends. Um, you know, it all depends on the specifics of where the pole and and maybe Don can answer this question: Is does the pole have a uh, a line going out way behind it into my property or not? Um, but that was my. Uh, that's my that's my primary concern. My, my secondary concern is what's going to happen about the tree. But <laughs> um, if the if the pole is in addition to the tree or in replacement of the tree. So from what I can tell, uh, there's a stake off to the right. Uh, the pole is going to go off to the right in the front, so it would be in the public right of way, uh, which is why it, the petition is here for for the um, the select board, and um, it. Basically, the wire is going to come off the tree and attached to the pole instead. Um, so there should not be any easement. Otherwise, we would have contacted you prior. Um, and all the work that will be done will be within the right of way uh, along the road, river road. So there, there will not be that, that additional wire that goes from the pole back into the property is what you're saying. It, it doesn't have one of those wires to hold it up. I assume you're, you're speaking about a guy wire, one of the ones that goes down behind the pole and yeah, sticks in the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I did not see anything in the design for that. Um, and I'm not proposing that here either because I don't see it in the design. Um, and there shouldn't be one necessary. The whole purpose for this pole itself is to keep the other um, all the all the poles with the electrical wires on the other side of the road in place um, because the tree has been doing that for years and we don't want the tree to do that um, because trees die. Um, so we, we want uh, the pole to be there in place to keep the other pole in line. Thanks for the clarification. Am I assuming as part of that question that the homeowner would prefer did that tree be removed? Um, or am I incorrect? <laughs> uh, probably. I mean, at this point in time, it's 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 only a, a, a stump, and so I mean, it's a very 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 large stump. It's you know six or eight feet across and and um, and quite big. So wow. I don't think that I'm um, super concerned about it. But I think I just want to know: will it stay or will it go? <laughs> Well, I, I guess the question would be for Don that, that 
and perhaps I'm jaded, but if it doesn't go now, it's never going to go. If you don't use your leverage to get rid of it now, um, you're never going to have that leverage back. Right. <laughs> so I think it would be wise to think about whether you want that Trump removed as part of your negotiations. It um, makes sense to me to, to remove it. I imagine it would have some expense associated with it. I remember it had some expense with the original removal of the, the upper part of the treaty. So I, I don't know how that um, moves forward. Who removed that tree? Was it a utility? Well, it was it was considered a, a town tree. So it was, um, you know, the, the highway department hired out a company to remove it. Right, but but the utility didn't have it, didn't ask for it to be removed because of wires. Is my question. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, it came before a hearing for that as well. Um, and Verizon was involved at that point in time too. Right. Um, but I think it was a town expense that was approved for you know safety reasons. Um, and like I said, at that time, it was it was approved by the town and determined to be a, a town expense and not not officially on my property. Right. Okay. Sorry, I don't have more specifics than that. I've got two comments and then I'm going to stop talking. Um, my two comments are first, as regards to the, to the stump, I don't know how many trees have been removed from different roads in the town of Waitley over the past year, probably years generous, but six months to a year. Um, and the town is now littered with tree stumps and there are no plans to remove those tree stumps. Um, the utility took them down. The utility asked the homeowners if it was okay to take it down. But I'm guessing that the homeowners never assumed in a million years that the utility would be keeping the stumps there because the stumps weren't getting away in the way of their work, just the tree was. So why bother removing stumps on people's properties uh, if, if I don't have to? And I'm speaking on behalf of the utilities and forgive me if I shouldn't. Um, so I'm troubled by yet more work happening and we just have a bunch of tree stumps with no plans to remove them and then my second point is is that the utilities seem to be continuously eager to come and ask about poles and again i get the reason for this poll totally understand it but we have double poles littering the town of waitley and we were promised that they'd be removed and they've increased in number rather than decreased in numbers and my guess is that Verizon says that it's Comcast and Comcast says that it's Eversource and then MBI might be in there somewhere. And, and, and it's just incredibly frustrating that the focus is always on what's next rather than cleaning up what, what took place in the past. And I'm, and I'm going to stop there. And Joyce and Fred, you can, you can yell at me or you can echo whatever you want to do. No. I, I echo what you're saying about the double poles. They're, they're all over the place. <laughs> No one seems to be taking responsibility for clearing, cleaning them up. Yeah, I would agree. That's what I hear the most about from people is that they drive down, especially Christian Lane, but this is probably true on other roads. Um, and these double poles that have been there for years and years and years are just falling through the cracks as far as whatever process is supposed to be there. We did have a meeting once with people from Comcast and Verizon and Eversource on it. I don't know if it was a year ago, but it was certainly during pandemic times because it was a Zoom meeting, that much I remember. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about how great this system was and how um, you know each person gets notified when they're supposed to do something. And yet we have all these double poles that we, we gave permission for them to put up the new poll uh, with the understanding that the old poll would go away. So um, I, I guess I understand, I, I get why this new poll needs to be there. Um, and if we didn't have this problem with double polls, then I would have no hesitation to just move that we approve this and go on about our business. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily inclined to, uh, to approve this in the absence of 
some kind of motion, some kind of movement on on getting rid of all those double poles that have been there for more than a year. Um, yeah, I, I I agree with you guys. Again, the, the stumps really do bug me. I mean, th those stumps used to be pretty impressive. Most of them were, most of them were maple trees. Um, now they got permission from the homeowners and that's great. I understand that. And the, that's the homeowner's decision. But I, I really don't believe the homeowners intended to have stumps left in their path. I, I just, I, it, it is, it is mind numbing to think that that's okay. So we don't have a plan to remove, to remove stumps. The, it's not like the homeowners asked for the trees to be removed. It was a favor from the utilities. And I admit, I don't know which one. To the homeowners, can we remove these trees because we want to do X, Y, and Z with our wires? And yet again, it seems like the utilities really, really don't care about the aesthetics or the 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 the, the living, the, the lifestyle, the visual impact of our town. They just want to do their thing, and and nothing else matters. And you know, I, this is the last time I get to, to, to speak on behalf of the town, of the town residents. But if it were in front of my house, and I, I would be, I'd be beside myself. And I think a lot of these residents are beside themselves. I know they are, but nothing happens. So I, I'm not in a position to, to really want to approve this at this point until we get a firm plan with a, with a Gantt chart. And if they need an explanation on how to create a Gantt chart, they can email me that is easily followed and we see action. But right now it's, they're going to move on. And I know Don, you're just the messenger and I'm, I'm sorry that you have to hear this, but it, 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 it's got to stop at some point. Fool, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, or no, on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And I'm done being fooled. So, any other public comment? Um, Joyce, you said that there were, there were things to be read. I hadn't seen anything, but I admit I'm oh, not Oh, I paying. just, I thought there was a comment that uh, someone wrote in. And so maybe Brian has that and can read it in. Yep, we did have one comment. Um, it's an email from um, Dan Dennehy um, to the select board. It was received Tuesday, June 7th. It said, I again suggest the select board grant no further pole placements until the approximate 50 double poles in town are removed. The select board was assured this would happen last time if they would just allow Yankee Candle power first. Comma, fool me once. <laughs> oh, really? Good segue, John. Good segue. Um, if I, if I could... I, that hurts. <laughs> in a, if I could just tread it. Um, wanted me to talk about a communication I had with, with um, Verizon and that was, um, I had requested, so there's the, there's a double pole database that the board had um, been informed about, right? About coordinating pole removal. And I, I, I asked for the list and it was sent to me. And I, on the list, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine double poles listed. Um, and I thought, wow, they really, cleaned up Christian Lane really quick. Um, so I took a drive out there and I took a drive out there today. Um, and I counted 34 double poles on Christian Lane between Long Plain Road and the railroad tracks. There's another 10 double poles on Long Plain Road. And then there's still three double poles on Christian Lane um, next to the, uh, the bridge over the Mill River. If you recall, that was a long time ago, many years ago when they when they were putting the uh, the the platforms up right um yeah they can put a platform there but they they put three very large uh voltage regulators i think on poles eventually but the double poles are still there so that's going back maybe two years three years i feel like that was almost in person when we had i think that, that was so, pre-pandemic yeah yeah it so, was um i mean that's 47 poles that are not listed on the database um and if this is what's coordinating the work between the utilities, we have no idea what's happening with these. Um, 
So I just wanted to, to mention that. So it, I, I was frustrated. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I, I share your, I, I appreciate that you're doing the, 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 the data accumulation, Brian. Um, I drive down that road all the time and, and they're everywhere. And maybe they don't consider a half a pole, a, a dual, double pole, but guess what? A pole is a pole. I don't care how long it is or what it's connected to. It's still there. Um, and, you know, and maybe I'm being reflective. I've been doing this for 18 years and the utilities have not up to their game, really. They, they, they would make, make sort of, sort of, sort of, blind passes it up in their game and it just doesn't happen so i'm not in the mood to approve this at this point until i see a plan or you guys see a plan on how to clean up stumps and double pulls and if we don't see a plan you know what they clearly don't really want to do business in whaley they just want to do half business in whaley to to meet their self-serving needs and not the needs of of, of the residents of whaley So you, if you guys want to do this, I don't think you do, but if you want to, that's fine. But, I, but I'm not going to vote in favor. Yeah. I guess the only thing I would add is that it shouldn't be that we pay a, a town employee to go out and correct their database. I mean, it might be that that's the most expeditious way to get all these polls taken care of. But I think that just, it's, you know, one more thing on my long list of, you know, things that I have on the uh, um, the reasons the reasons I love Eversource or the reasons I love Comcast or the reasons I love Verizon. Uh, and, and I use love meaning, well, the opposite, right? Um, you know, it, it's just um, one more reason for people to be disappointed in their utilities. No, and I see no reason to approve yet another poll when we don't no action's been taken on these. They don't even have an accurate database of what's there. How we need to know that this double pole just won't fall into the cracks and yeah. be there for years. We, we are, um, Don, I'm sorry, but we're, we're not gonna take action on this. We're not gonna approve it at this point. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly understand. Um, yeah, I will certainly report this back uh, to the powers that be at Verizon. Um, this is, just for clarification, this would not create a double pole situation. This is just going to no. leave a stump. Um, but right. the stump right. is, is, not, uh, uh, is not created by Verizon. Um, but I, I completely understand where you guys are coming from. This is, you're not the only town believe me, um, where I hear these. So I will certainly report this back and um, with the understanding that there will not be uh, a vote on this either way. So um, they'll get the message one way or another. Thank you. And, 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 and Brian, I am going to suggest, and I'm happy to sign it in the next week before elections, that we sign, that we send a letter to the Mass Department of Public Utility Control and indicate our frustration with the lack of, of utilities under their guidance. They're not, they're not responsive to the needs of communities. They're just not. And it's the PUC's role to monitor and to make sure that utilities are compliant. And, and I think that it's time to, to, to formally submit a letter so that, that we're on the record that, that the utilities are out of compliance. They're, they're not working in the best interest of, of, of towns. And, and I'm going to say small towns because I don't know what it is for larger towns. But they're not working in the best interest of small towns uh, in Massachusetts. Namely, Waitley is one. So... I, I'd love to sign that thing if you guys want to, if, if you want to draft it. I think it's more powerful if, if Fred and Joyce also sign it. Um, but I, I, I just, I, it, it, it's just mind numbing to me. If, if this were a competitive business, oh my God, equity man, equity, private equity be lining up to, 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 to beat these guys to, at their game because they're not good at it. 
And I was just going to say, so it sounds like I might try before this gets represented in the future, I might try to coordinate between the highway department and Verizon to talk about whose responsibility removing the stump would be once the guideline is taken off of the stump. So maybe reaching out to is it Keith Bard as well? Yeah. To, to start that. Yeah. yeah, I think Keith would be a good place to start on that. I may agree. Okay, great. Because I think I, you know, I think it couldn't be taken down entirely before because of because of the guy wire, but yeah. we'll reach out to him. Thank you so much for, for letting me comment on that. Okay. So, uh, so so Jonathan, procedurally, um, so we haven't we have an active petition. We've held a public hearing. Um, we've notified the butters. So I think uh, I think the board needs to, to take some action to at least close up what's happening at this meeting, whether that's a whether we want to, to continue the public hearing um, to a time and date certain and request more information, whether obviously I, I think if you take no action after the public hearing, it's it's a de facto denial. Um, so I think that's appealable to uh, to the Department of Public Utilities, I think. I don't know if they would go ahead and spend money on that or just refile the petition. I, I, I don't know what they what the utilities would do. Hopefully they would come back in at a future meeting and, and talk about the, the issue. Um, so there's a procedural question and also what communication do you want me to have um, with the utilities with Verizon and Eversource? What, what's the message you want me to send? Again, just my thought, but my thought would be that we we officially close this hearing and 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 deny their request or take no action. Their, well, right. I, I I wonder whether it's a more powerful statement to close it and deny as opposed to oh. take no action. But that, you know that's that that's neither here nor there. But I and then in the letter to the PUC, I think that we need to say we and it would allow us to say either. Uh, at a June 8 public hearing on on uh, on adding a poll on on Straits Road, the select board chose to take no action or chose to close close the hearing. And here are the here are the reasons we 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 uh, we denied or took no action. And it's a continuation, and and the denial is based upon a continuation of inaction uh, and a a, a a a lack of keeping good faith promises um, that we were given when we approved previous pole, pole construction. I, I just think that it's a hand in glove thing, personally, that that's, yeah. I mean, does that give you enough guidance on the letter, Brian, or do you need more clarity than that? I, I think that's, I, I think that's good. The only, I, I would support that. The only thing I would add though, is that we speak on behalf of ourselves and not represent this as on behalf of all small towns. Oh yeah, that's fine. I, I yes, I, Fred, I, I apologize. That was a little bit of hyperbole on my part. <coughs> okay. So if, so if you're going to take, if you're going to sort of take no action or vote to deny, I just want to. I just want to make sure and, and make sure that what's on the record is um, is a double poll list that was sent to me um, from Verizon that lists the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine polls. And also on the sheet as part of the record would be the survey that I that I uh, did on June 7th, 2022, um, that identified 34 double polls on Christian Lane, 10 on Long Claim. Um, and then actually three additional ones on Christian Lane by the bridge. I want to make sure that's that's on the public hearing right does, now. Does that include any that are on their list or are these in addition to their list? That these are in addition to the list. Um, but I want to make sure that's in the public record. I just want to make sure that it's clear that for the basis of I list. think that's freaking amazing that those are all in addition to what's on their list. Right. I mean, amazing, that's but not true. in a good way. Right. Because that Christian Lane work was happened. Within the year, right? Or was it beyond a year? Yeah, I just don't remember. Fall, at least. I think it's a year-ish. It might have been in the fall it, it, rather it, than the summer. Okay. Yeah, and and it just like and all of a sudden it happened. And they worked. By the way, 
they were so quick to take those trees down and put those poles up. Oh my God, they worked like lightning. They, and, but the snowball didn't keep going down the road to finish the job. It just sort of stopped. So Brian, I'm all for that. You can add that to the, to the, to the public record. Uh, any, any data is good data. Um, you know, and, and I, I'll, I'll admit, I would, I would love to, to have this letter signed by next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. So, so I can vent one more time. <laughs> oh. All right. Okay. okay. Let's um then we'll take no action and let's let's move on. Okay, I move that we close the hearing. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Brad? Yep. Me? Yep. Hearing closed. So do you want to take a call vote either way or just not take any action? Hmm. I'm agnostic. Let's just close. Let's move on. And and make sure we send a bill. Um, Brian, I'd like you to figure out what your hourly rate is and figure out how much time you spent doing this and send a bill to all three utilities saying, uh, and you guys can divvy it up, but. <laughs> um, yeah. The gas is going to be more expensive than my time. Right? <laughs> so. All right. Um, COVID-19, is there anything? Still there. No. Yep. Yep. It's still there. Stay safe. Um, no, no old business either. So um, reviewing and awarding fuel bids for gasoline for fiscal year 2023. Yep. So as we typically do, we bid gasoline through the regional uh, fuel bid with FERCOG. Uh, we received the results from that, that uh, bid uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and the low bidder is for Waitley is uh, Santa Buckley out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, they are the low bidder, um, and I don't have any reason to recommend that that the that the board reject the low bidder. So I would recommend that that's who we go. With. What's the number? Um, it's seventy. Uh, yes, yeah, seventy-one cents 71 above. Cents. Um, Wait, you guys were both talking at once. What is it? A 71 cents over rack price. Okay. Well, this is just for the gasoline, right? This is not for the fuel oil, right? That'll be Correct. a separate. Yeah, we usually bid that ourselves because we get favorable prices from local vendors. Uh, well, I would uh, move that we uh, accept the low bid here, Santa Buckley, uh, for the gasoline uh, contract. Yeah, June 15th, we'll get the uh, gasoline. Brother, do you have a second? I, I seconded, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, all those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Me, yes. Okay. Um, at town meeting, uh, Mark Boussier approached me about wanting to get involved, get involved with the, um, with the complete makeover of, uh, Tritown beach. And I was thrilled because Mark is a worker, uh, mm. as I, I think you guys both know, um, he and his wife both provide a tremendous amount of, of, of volunteerism and, and energy to the town. And so I, I would like to um, appoint Mark Boussier to the Tritown Beach Commission. Hmm. I would second that. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred, did you have any comments or are you good? Oh, no, I, I apologize. I mean, Mark's okay. a great choice. Yeah, uh, so uh, Fred. Yes. Me, yes, okay. Um, Meet Brian, page will two. you give me a page two? I found it. Yes, Brian, will you give me a favor or 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 Amy? I guess um, when Mark comes in, I don't have his email address. If somebody could send it to me, I would appreciate that. I okay, have. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, ten minutes for updates. Yep. 
uh, crystalline cohort replacement project. Um, so we, we received uh, preliminary plans and the field data collection memo, which is wetland delineation and, and assessments of the, of the, of, of the brook. Um, and Keith is reviewing those. Um, we also did a, uh, we also did a, a boring that's typically done for, uh, you know, bridges and box culverts. And it's typically, it typically goes down to 30 feet. Um, and typically you hit rock at that point. Um, well, we didn't. Um, so, um, they're going to do an additional boring that's, that's, uh, deeper, um, to try to see if we can hit some sort of stable soil. As essentially what, what was revealed is, uh, it's essentially sand and clay layers, um, with, uh, that are saturated. Um, so it's pretty much, I, I don't know what to describe it as, maybe a marshmallow, um, but it's, it's not going to be, it's likely not going to be conducive to a, a typical uh, precast uh, box culvert. Um, so the, right now there's an alternative design um, for um, an aluminum arch culvert um, that obviously weighs a lot less. Um, so that's what we're pursuing now. Uh, that's I, I think that's a favorable uh, design at this point, um, but it still needs to go through mass DOT review and, and things like that. Um, so we're still moving that forward, uh, but I just wanted to let you know that it's it's pretty much like a marshmallow there. So we may have to find something uh, a different design. Um, mm -hmm. And there's cost implications. It seems to be a little bit probably a little bit less expensive. Um, oh. It may have a similar or slightly less you know useful life of approximately 80 years, um, depending on, on who you ask, whether it's the engineer or mass DOT, but um, the, that project is still moving along. Um, reminder that the, the local town election is June uh, 14th at, and voted will be at the Waitley Town Hall. So it will not be at Fort Sandy Lane um, and the hours are 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. 250th anniversary celebration starts June 17th. Um, so there has been a tremendous, at least from what I've observed, a tremendous amount of work over the past two years, year Three, and a half, four, years. four years, five years, six years. I don't know. There's been a four tremendous years. amount of work uh, that has been put into this. So um, it starts June 17th and there is a schedule of events that you can reach. Um, the way that I reach it is I go to the town's website and I click on the 250th tab and there's links to the, the 250th website. And, and there the, will be the, the, the special issue of the scoop, which is going to the post office tomorrow, which will have details on all the events. Yep. And uh, really good part. Um, Hurley Park Accessibility Improvement Project. Um, we have building, we have received building plans. Um, we're currently trying to finalize the specifications for the, uh, the restroom renovations and the engineers uh, working on finalizing the, um, the plans for the, the driveway and the parking lot. Um, you recall that project's a mix of funding with CPA and the state grant. Um, and that state grant is available to us um, starting July 1st, it's an FY23 grant. So um, I haven't nailed hey, down the Brian, timing yet. But. Yeah, that was gonna be my question. What, and, and we really haven't talked about it much and we really need to. Um, Hurley is a pretty crowded place, high demand. I mean, it, it's probably the highest demand geographic footprint in the town of Whaley. Um, especially during the school year. Mm -hmm. And it strikes me that the time to do this, I don't know what the time frame is in terms of length of project, but, you know, soccer teams and everything was from, from, from Frontier will start using this place mid to end of August. The baseball season for for rec and 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 other leagues slows down a little bit, so you don't have a huge volume of people. 
but once the fall hits, you've got 50 cars in that parking lot virtually every day. And that runs through the construction season. And I can't imagine this is going to be able to be done in January, but maybe I'm wrong. But what, what's the timing on this? And we, I think we really need to put together a group to, to figure that out. Yeah, Keith and I were talking, uh, Keith and I were talking this past week about getting a, uh, the REC, representatives from REC and from Frontier. I had a conversation with Darius to give him a heads up that we need to get together to, to figure out the best timing as to when, when the driveway and parking lot can be unveiled for a little bit. Obviously the restrooms can be, can be done fairly in fairly short order. And we can always put, if we need to rent a, a, a portable toilets for, you know, two weeks, we can do that. But definitely the parking lot and driveway will be coordinated. Well, it, it strikes me that, that from the middle of July, even early July through the middle of August, you could do the bathrooms in stages. So you close one, if it's possible, you close one, you keep two open, you close another one, you keep the other two open. And so, so that it's iterative. Um, so we don't have to rent porta potties. We don't have to put people to the experience of using a porta potty. Mm. But we should put together that, that, and I'm happy to, yeah. to you know, I'll, I'll work with Chris Williams and, 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 and be a part of that. But it, you know, like that, so many people really use something this. that we should be micromanaging, but the rec department work that out well, with that, the right. and people involved. That's that's why I say me because I, I have yet to I've yet to resign from rec. Um, so I'm I'm happy to reach out to Chris, but I may need to be reminded to reach out to Chris. And I, for one, would reappoint you <laughs> whenever you turn. <laughs> <laughs> next meeting, next meeting. I'm not. I'm. I'm not sure. I appreciate the vote of confidence, but thank you anyway. <laughs> um, okay. What else? Anything, Brian? And the last one, Haydenville Road reconstruction project. Um, this will actually uh, move into what we want to talk about. One of the items we want to talk about in executive session. But um, I mean, we we passed the the authorization at town meeting. Um, so, so I'll be putting together uh, with legal counsel the, the special legislation that we need uh, to file with Natalie so that she can get um, that in the works. Um, we'll essentially, I mean, we'll have to file it. I think the legislative session ends July, the formal session ends what, June 30th, maybe? Um, assuming they can uh, get a budget passed. Uh, but it, the new session will restart in January. So I think that's when we would see that. Um, Joyce, I, I saw in the, the Senate's budget bill, they introduced an amendment to extend remote meeting provisions until December 2023. Um, but I don't think the House had it in their budget. So there'll be some, there'll be a, a, a reconciliation committee, I would think that would hopefully approve that. So that would, that would take care of it until December of 2023. Yeah, um, but they're not meeting until January, right? <laughs> so, so that was uh, likely well, to expire. They're still in session now. Right, they're still in session. They're still working on the budget. It's, it's part of the budget. It's an amendment yeah. to the budget. So, um, right. But, but if they're not going to actually fix the open meeting law, it's a continuing December. resolution. Yeah. They don't, so, Joyce, they don't, they don't. That that'll them. get rid. Yeah. Anyway, by, by that point, it'll be. Uh, but we'll be in a different situation, but I'm yes, I was in touch with uh, with our state senator, our current state senator, which will be different by the time we get to December, um, and uh, and that's what they they told me. They expect that this will get passed in some form in both houses of the legislature. Right, because because the 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 these these COVID meeting laws have so much to do with the budget. Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's amazing how, how closely aligned they are. Yeah. Um, and, and what was the other comment that I was going to make that I'm going to waste everybody's time on? Um, I don't even remember now, but it okay, had some one rant I, per I, meeting. I, so I think you've had, yeah, but they were, they were, they were joined at the hip. Um, anyway, uh, executive session, Brian. Uh, Bill Road. 
Are, are yeah, we allowed to talk Dora. about um, uh, like the three of us making a gift to Virginia Alice? I mean, I know we're not oh, allowed to yes. do something like that. Um, I'd be happy to you know make the gift on our behalf and then catch up with with uh, uh, Jonathan and and Fred outside of that to make whatever contributions you want to make. Um, but I I know there's separation of church and state, but she designated the Waitley Congregational Church as the place to send gifts in lieu yep. of flowers. So. Yep, absolutely. Um, Joyce, uh, do you have Venmo? I feel like. Um, I feel like I should send them a hundred bucks and then whatever portion no, but, of that you and right. Fred would be willing to chip in. I would be uh, happy to take care of right, we, we can talk about that offline. That, uh, Is that allowed right. to talk? I, about, I, we can talk about that offline, like the exact I amount, so. but I, that's what I'm thinking. Something right. of that order is I, significant, yeah. but not, you know, they, they can actually buy something with that. Yeah. Right. And, and my point was, I will reimburse you via Venmo if you have it. I'm a Venmo gal. Okay. All right. So uh, Haydenville Road, Brian. So if you want to go into executive session, we would need a roll call vote. To go I move that we uh, go into executive session. I second. And then we'll have to remove Zoom, some Zoom things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we will not be going back into open session. I think we, we would, because I think the vote to um, on the employment agreement oh. for the town administrator has to be done in regular session. So right. okay, I'm not trying to manage that with the broadcast, uh, but we are recording. So the recording would have that if we just stop recording for executive session, restart the recording for the post-executive session. Okay. We can open up, open up the fishbowl in a little while. Um, okay, so all those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Yes. Me, yes. Okay, um, if we could go into executive session. Um, we just, I, I don't know how to phrase this. We just came out of executive session for the, for the public to be aware. Um, we were discussing the contract, uh, a new contract for our town administrator, Brian Domina. Um, um, and, and now we are going to vote on whether we think that Brian uh, deserves a contract uh, a renewal. Um, I believe the contract will be posted on the website, Brian, after it's cleaned up and signed. It can be. Or is that not the way it works? It's a public record. It's public, public, public record. Anybody right. so wants to know can find out. Yeah. If, if anybody wants to see what, what, what terms we negotiated with Brian, um, they are more than welcome to, to uh, inquire at, at town offices. Um, but I don't, I don't necessarily see the need to, to go into detail on what the contract entails. Um, but I think, it, you know, overall, this board is incredibly grateful for the talents that Brian brings every day to this town. Um, and that I hope that uh, people in town agree uh, that, that we have a, um, an asset that we do not want to lose. Um, so I will entertain a motion um, to accept or to sign a contract renewal in the, in the uh, duration of three years for, for Brian. I second All that. Those in, uh, no, you, you, you second it? Okay. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Me, yes. Brian, congratulations. You are appointed for another three-year term. Oh, I will say thank you. Well, he, he will be once he signs the contract. <laughs> no backseat. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. We don't want you to come and renegotiating a year and a half later because your value went up dramatically and stuff like that. It's like baseball players. Well, mm. gas keeps going up. Just okay, so, well, I would move then that okay. we adjourn. I, if I may, just I would like to thank Jonathan for his service to the board since this is his last meeting. And thank you. Not, not that this thanks preclude any other, anything else the board may decide to do in his honor, but I thought some mention should be made of it in his last meeting. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's been a it's been a great eighteen years. Um, it, it never in a million years that I think I'd do this for eighteen years, um, and it's been rewarding. I've been able to work with Joyce for ten years, Joyce maybe of the yeah. eighteen. So, yeah. Something like that. 
Um, Fred, it's been 11, great over the yeah. past year. 11, yeah, whatever it's been. Fred with, as, in the finance committee. I've worked with, with, with people like Alan Sanderson and Paul Newland and Harlan Bean. Uh, I, I think, and, and, and Fred Orlowski. Uh, it's been great. And then town administrators, Brian and, and, uh, and uh, Mark Brahensky. Yeah. Mark Brahensky and Lynn Sibley and Chris mm -hmm. Smith. Chris Ryan, yeah. Chris Ryan. I'm Chris sorry, Ryan. way back when. Chris yeah. Ryan. Um, Our very so, first town administrator of, I don't know if that was his actual title, but. Yeah, it was. He was town administrator. He was town administrator when I when I joined the board, and it's been mm -hmm. it's been a wonderful experience. Um, I I I'm thrilled at the things I I I was able to accomplish. I forget the things that I didn't do well, <laughs> um, and so thank you very much. And I will miss you guys, but I am eager to begin my select board retirement and uh, and, uh, and 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 do things with my family and and try to grow my business uh, in in with the time that it deserves. So, uh, but I will be watching from afar and, and, and wishing Waitley all the best uh, for whatever, whatever it does in the future. And I hope that I've laid, laid a decent foundation for its, its prosperity. So you can feel free you. to send, send us missives by email at your. Right. Right. But there's somebody said one rant per meeting. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somebody suggested I do that, Fred. You just tell them what to do from afar. No, I'm I'm gonna let you guys do the work you do well, and I'm gonna. Well, no, I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna watch the meetings on because I'm I, I, I'm I I'm not. <laughs> so, um, but uh, but you know, I'm I'm always available to anybody for for you know. It's sort of like when the president calls former presidents, you know. <laughs> I welcome that. Okay. Thanks, you guys. So we have adjourned. Are we adjourned? Yes. I. We're, we're adjourned. I. Fred. I. Okay. <laughs>